Yeah, what, hey, are you ready for summer? Because you know it's like starts in what? About 48 hours, Friday to be exact. But with that comes this incredible growth in your yards, our gardens. Things are growing at prehistoric paces. What do you do? You have questions. You posed a lot of them in the hive. Unfortunately, I know a guy with the answer. And I went gardening with Cisco. First up, Cisco, Melanie planted some Brussels sprouts, but now they are huge. She says they're a cool weather plant. Should she move them into partial shade? No, don't do it. Whatever you do, it might kill those Brussels sprouts. What a loss that would be. No, you just got to hope that we don't get a too hot summer and then they should form sprouts pretty soon. If it stays really, really hot, you may not get sprouts, but your best chance of leaving where they are. A burning question from Deborah: What's the best way to get rid of blackberry bushes? Okay, the best way is if it's possible to mow them, mow them. If you mow blackberries every two weeks, they'll be gone by the end of summer, replaced by grasses and weeds that like being mowed. No woody plant can take being mowed week after week. Cisco Candace wants to know about snails and slugs and the best get red quick method. Candace, you must have missed the video that we made about that. So check it out. It has all kinds of great solutions. My favorite is to use beer to catch slugs and snails because they die happy. Oh la la. Rebecca says, hey, what are the best container trees for a small outdoor space here in the PNW? Oh, they're so cool trees that you can get. Japanese maples, you want to make sure you get a dwarf, whatever you do. And there's some dwarf ginkgo trees to die for. My favorite one is called Munchkin. I told everybody it was called Pip Squeak until some experts said, that's Munchkin, you dim dim. Find that one, it's the coolest tree you'll ever see. Jenny says, how can I get rid of horsetail weed? You can't, Jenny. If you have horsetail in your garden, it means you were bad in your last life. There's no hope. So move in winter. <laughs> okay, now Don is also asking about those pesky horsetails. What's your real advice? Okay, there's only one bit of advice I can give you, and that's to hide them. The horsetail stays alive in there but nobody ever sees it. Cisco nine-year-old Cassidy, who also just so happens to double as my daughter, came across this cozy little plant. It does feel like velvet. What are they? Cassidy, you picked one of my favorite plants. I've got it right in my garden. It's called lamb's ears. Makes a great ground cover. It was actually used as the Band-Aid in the Civil War. It tends to coagulate blood, and it's got a lot of antibacterial qualities in it. So. That plant does a lot of good. By the way, the bees love the flowers, and we want to do everything we can to be nice to our bees. Big thank you, as always, to Cisco. Uh, when we went to Cisco, Michelle was nice enough to post in the hive. What are your questions? There was like a dozen, maybe 15 by the time I got there. By the time I got back, there was over 60. Yeah. So yeah. we posed it's a lot of questions. He's got a lot of answers. Uh, we're going to continue to do that. But I, I did love selfishly. Uh, that was about a month ago that my daughter found those those plants and said, what is this? That's so soft. And I picked it up and it feels like 100% velvet and turns out, yeah, it's called lamb's ear. And Cisco happened to have it in his garden and talked about the historical significance. So it's very cool. Uh, we're going to get to more of his questions. And again, next week, we're going to pay off that rabbit invasion, the bunny rabbits that are in all of our yards. He's got some simple things you can do to kind of protect your plants. And then, of course, uh, there's no Cisco for the bug world, at least not one that we're friends with. But a couple of minutes ago, you posted a picture of that moth, wanted to know what it was. I told you about the app. We actually featured this a week ago. It's called Insect Identification. Now, this is one of those apps. I bought the paid version, which was $5, but, uh, well, I have two daughters, so I've basically been an exterminator for the last uh, 12 years, so it is worth it. And that's 73% accuracy, says so that's a tiger moth. Ladies There's and the gentlemen. text you're talking about right that's there. That's the bug app. So yeah. it is called Insect Identification. And again, it is a paid one. There's some okay. free options, but the results were like, eh. And uh, I'm going to go with a paid option. I believe you get what you pay for, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Insect yeah, I mean, you tried it on live television. That was not planned. That was a yeah. picture so of a was, picture. Yeah. That wasn't yeah. planned. Well, and if you yeah. saw the piece a week ago, I even took pictures of, of bugs that have moved on to the great beyond, and it even identified those with accuracy. So that's wow. pretty cool. But we're being yeah. cut off by music. Okay. Yeah.